Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to our latest webcast that we're bringing you from Travel Weekly. And this man here will be recognisable to you all. It is, of course, Steve Williams, the Sales Director at MSC Cruises. Morning, Steve. How are you? Morning, Lucy. Absolutely fantastic. Well, apart yeah. from it being very wet outside, but... We like it when it's raining, I'm remember? Home, getting ready and excited for the Globes this week. Oh, it's only two days to go. I know, yeah. we'll be excited. And I'm, you're going to be taking over the balcony again. I... Absolutely, yeah. We yeah. can't wait to welcome our 80 guests to have the time of their life on Thursday night. I'm sure it will be absolutely amazing. Yeah, well, we're hoping there's going to be, Steve, a really good atmosphere in the room because so far everyone is pretty positive about the start of the year and uh, that's why you're on here today tell us a little bit about what you've been seeing so we're you know a week or so into wave yeah. um and i know you reported the other day that you'd actually had a bit of a record breaking start to the year tell us about it we have it, i mean q4 the back end of last year was uh record breaking in itself so um you know we had a very unusual end of the year which was just huge um, and you kind of think, well, is there going to be some dilution when you get into Q1 because people were booking even earlier? Um, but, you know, kind of everyone went off their Christmas break and I saw something happen I haven't seen in many, many years, which was you wake up on Boxing Day and, you know, when I used to be a frontline travel agent, you used to have queues at your travel agent, that Boxing Day rush. And literally when I got the sales figures in on the 27th, so going back to Boxing Day, it was just like old times. The numbers were absolutely off the scale. And, and you think, is, it, is this a one-off clip? Um, and then every day since the 26th of December, the numbers have got stronger and stronger and stronger. And every day we are breaking sales records as we're continuing to build the weekend. We had our best ever Sunday just gone, Saturday, uh, yesterday was a record-breaking day, and it, it's getting stronger every day. So, you know, we normally look forward to, we normally say week two to three into four is when it gets really, really busy because people shop and they inquire and then they have a thing, can look around at the deals. And then, you know, as it comes later into January, particularly with January payday, about the 25th of Jan, that's when we see the, the real peak. So if it continues at this pace, I mean... I just don't know where the numbers are going to be. It's it's fantastic. And oh. it, it feels better than normal, Lucy. Um, you know, and so much pins on wave, particularly within crews and getting those early sales in. But we are looking exceptionally good. Um, so it feels fantastic. Oh, it's so good to hear you so positive. I love hearing this kind of news. Yeah. Um, now, you um, have put this down to three things. Uh, your broad uh, range of itineraries, obviously, you've got yeah. 22 odd ships now, or you might correct me, I think yeah, it's that many. No, correct. Um, well done. Thank you. Um, and then you also talked about the value that you're yes. offering. And then you also said your trade partners had, uh, were, were, were key to this. So maybe take yeah. us through those three points that you yeah, believe I are the key to your success. I think cruise this year i think i think a lot of work's been done in the pandemic in consumers realizing the value of cruise and um that falls into be it new to brand or new to cruise where a lot of people chose a cruise over maybe fly holidays purely because of logistics and problems with airports and strikes and, yeah. and challenges with getting overseas and i think it opened a lot of people's eyes to cruising and what great value it was uh, for money. I think in the current financial situation that we all find ourselves in, cruise as a sector is really standing out as exceptional value. Um, and then within that, um, you know, I'm proud to say I think MSC Cruises really kind of stands head and shoulder um, within our sector because, you know, if you take somebody booking a cruise right now, um, I think the idea of paying up front and having so much included, they know they can afford that cost of the cruise. And actually, if things get a bit tighter, be it mortgage rates go up or your fuel bill lands in April and it, it's huge. If they can afford that cruise now, then they know that's what they're paying. So, you know, right now, 
they're booking, they're getting premium all-inclusive drinks and we don't cap our drinks. Um, they literally can go on board and drink as much as they like. Uh, we pay for their gratuities on board, um, obviously all the meals, the entertainment. Um, and I think that is really resonating and hitting the sweet spot with consumers. Um, there's obviously a huge choice of itineraries out there. So whether they want sun going down to the Med out of Southampton, they want something a bit different going up north to the fjords, you know, fly cruise, be it Caribbean, Dubai, you know, all of these products are doing well, but we are seeing XUK doing particularly well right now. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think there is an element where I know looking at my own holidays, you know, I've just been to Lapland and it's a third time I've been loose. I, la, the, the first and second time I, I went, I paid £200 for my flight. I paid £600 this year. So it's three times as expensive. Yeah. So that cruise out of Southampton hasn't gone up. It, it's such good value to money. And I think people realise, actually, yeah, this is great. And, and, the, and you fix that cost down. The trade partner piece, we reward our trade partners really well. Um, so we're very rich commercially. And then, you know, you book the cruise. We don't have non-commercial cruise fares and taxes. If they book a thousand pound cruise, they're earning their full commission on that cost. Yeah. So it's a really good earning for them. And then if the agent is doing the piece where they add on the shore excursions, or spa packages or dining packages, we also pay the commissions on that. So it can be a really rich booking for that frontline agent. Yeah. Um, and, and you've got some great incentives as well in for agents this really year. Good you've got your balcony. So in January, we're giving away a cruise every single day, um, seven night cruise for two people in a balcony every single day in January. Uh, that's, that's proven hugely successful. So we may be looking to extend that further. Um, oh, that this here business first. continues to go as well as it is so watch this space but yeah we, we love to reward our partners you know we've always been very very trade focused as you know um you know our travel agent partners have made us who we are today and and the huge success we are and we like to reward them they yeah. they know the product so many have cruised with us now they understand it really well um you know and the last few years, we've gone through a huge process of globalizing MSC. The, the cruise line that I joined six years ago is a very different cruise line to what it is today. Um, you know, we used to be very Mediterranean, as you know, and we truly are a global cruise line, uh, you know, with huge appeal to Brits and Irish and Americans. And whereas, you know, you know, we were, we were very Mediterranean. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, want, I want to come on and talk about how much MSC has changed actually since you've been there. We, we will talk about that, but just before we move on from the trade partners, you say that you reward them, obviously financially, which is fantastic, but um, you're also expanding your your team, aren't you? Uh, so, we and are. that's quite important. So it's not just the money that they earn, but no. it's about the service. And so yeah, it, tell us about that, because that's a new- yeah, it is loose. I think, look, when we went through COVID, uh, you know, me and Antonio sat down and something that was obviously very close to my heart, as I am the, the face of the sales team and the head of the sales team, was to retain that knowledge and experience we had. I thought it was business critical because we have, personally, I think the best sales team within the industry. And I have a huge wealth of knowledge and experience. As we went through the pandemic, they really came into their own because we all know there were challenges in terms of communication and contact and having my sales team there supporting the trade through that pandemic was business critical and yeah. I think made a huge difference to us. So there was that piece through the pandemic, but now we're out the pandemic, I have my team with that experience and knowledge um, and those long-standing relationships with their partners you know, and there's a big level of trust between us and our partners. And we're now at a point where, yes, we need to expand the team further. You know, we've got huge growth targets as we bring more hardware into the fleet. Uh, you know, we've just launched two more ships. We've got another one launching in June with many more to come, as you know. And, um, you know, more and more partners are working with us. And that's something we saw from the pandemic was, 
a lot of new travel agents signing up to sell cruise. Yeah. And is that why you, sorry, Steve, but is that why one of your new appointments in this team is a training uh, yeah. manager because so, you've got these new people that need to understand what you're offering yeah so um i mean there's three appointments i've got a trade support exec so in the office kind of you know frontline available all day every day getting new agents set up and managing them from the office then we're putting in a new regional sales manager out in the field to complement yeah. the existing field sales team because i need to shrink the regions because there's more and more agents within the region selling us. And then training. I mean, we didn't, when I joined, we didn't have a training remit, but training, I recognized quite quickly, was business critical for MSE because there was so many misconceptions around MSE. And as we changed and globalized and the product was changing, that was the message we needed to get out. But I don't want to detract from the sales team in selling and building those relationships and numbers up. So we put that training piece, uh, training team in that sits under me. So obviously we've got Claire that's head of training, but she is so busy. Um, you know, I, I've realized late last year, it wasn't enough and we now need to expand that team further. So we're hiring a trade, uh, training support executive to support Claire, who will be out in the field and doing webinars, etc. Um, for our trade partners, be it existing to further their, their, their knowledge and understanding of MSC or to work with new partners that want to right. sell MSC in the future. Yeah. Um, and it's such a critical part of the business now. Yeah, um, and that's and presumably training on all the different ships, but also the, like we talked about at the start, the, the, what you get for, for that fair, what, 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 what's included. Yeah, and absolutely. And of course, we've got MSE Masters, which is our online training platform that is growing and expanding all the time. So, you know, we, we have that, that um, you know, web based platform, but you can't beat delivery with real people as well. And, yeah. you know, call me quite old school, but, you know, my, my style, um, my team style of account management and training, I don't think you can be face to face being out there, being out with agents sitting in front of them to build relationships and and work with them to grow their business yeah well as we all know it you know it was challenging in the pandemic and Very. i did a webcast last week steve i'm sure you've seen some of it or the stories you know some of the agents were saying they they they're really struggling still with getting the right level of service um but it sounds like you kept your team in place and now you're adding to it so are you very confident that you can really deliver on the service side of things as well as all those fantastic itineraries and products and prices yeah i look and i, I you know me lucy i'm always very honest i'm not going to say it was challenging it was challenging and and last year was challenging where um we we never let anybody go but we lost some people particularly within our uk contact center yeah put a huge strain on uh service and levels of service within the contact center the, the really good news for us is we, we have a talent acquisition team that have worked very hard and looked in different places for talent. And we managed to fully staff up by late Q3 last year. Obviously, there's a process where we need to get those, those staff trained up, which we did in Q4. So that covers things like customer service, um, booking management, the contact center. But we've now gone into a fully staffed within our contact centre, um, you know, and it's I'm very sorry that if anyone did have challenges with us last year, it was tough. And I don't think there's a travel company that didn't find it challenging. No, I think you're right. That's where my sales team really come into their own, because everybody did have somebody they could contact and would work through and manage bookings and problems if they arose. But as we go into 23, I'm just so positive. We've got great team in place, we're fully staffed, we're expanding the sales team. We will also be expanding within the contact center further now to, to meet that supply and demand. So it, everything is super positive and looking really good for this year. I'm so pleased. And tell us then, just drill down a bit. I know you're saying cruise in general is popular because it's, you know, you know the fair you're playing up yeah. front and so much included, but what are there any particular trends that you're noticing? You know, are families booking, 
now? Are they booking outside of school hours? Have you got longer durations? Are people cutting back because of cost of living? Are they going further afield? What are you seeing? It's it's, it's really interesting. I mean, it, it, it's hard to pinpoint one thing. Families, without a doubt. I mean, already are... Our kind of July August sailings, particularly out of Southampton, where we do the 40 nighters down to the Med, yeah. are selling very quickly. And um, I guess while we're on that, word of advice, I mean, the earlier you book, the better your guests. Um, of course, we revenue manage. Yeah. And pricing right now is so keen. But, you know, of course, as that ship fills, Virtuoso in Southampton and cabins become limited we will move those prices up. So, yeah. you know, absolutely, you know, get your customers booked ASAP. It, it, it absolutely will move as we move through the season. Um, Caribbean is doing very well. So we're seeing strong demand, particularly our ship out of Barbados um, and our new ship Seascape out of Miami. Um, we've got new sailings where we're moving Meravilia, which will be home ported in New York permanently. Um, and we're seeing some really nice business on that, particularly with agents at Taylor May, where they're right, adding okay. in New York stays and things yeah. and booking the cruises. Um, World Europa, which of course is our, our new baby currently in the Emirates. Um, she's our best selling ship in the Med, no surprise. Um, you know, she's had so much profile over the last couple of oh, months yeah. and is an utter game changer for so us. So the bookings are mainly coming in for summer, summer 23, or are you seeing, because I summer know you put, you put- but what, I mean, you know, we have tradings on a Monday, we sat yesterday and I'm going through and we get a lot of intel from our accounts. I'm seeing really good late business still coming in for Virtuosa this winter. Really? So okay. February, March, April. Wow. Late bookings on Caribbean, um, particularly seaside out of Barbados, where- I think people have just had enough of this grey weather and they've held out and they're booking Caribbean. Dubai, Dubai is really challenging because um, we're actually, World Europa is, we're near sold out. Um, so there's demand, but but the ship has done so well. Well, you had um, so much you know, profile for her, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And so there's limited availability. There's bits and pieces, but I mean, she's done incredible. But then... What Just about 24? Because you put that on sale, we right? Did, yeah, I was going to say, Christmas. we're already seeing strong wind to 23, 24. Yeah. We're moving back to a no more normal booking pattern where we're seeing people booking much further out. And 24 has gone brilliant. So we put Virtuosa on sale for 24, literally just before uh, just we book Christmas. up for Christmas. Yeah. And we're already seeing incredible demand for that with um, particularly summer holidays. So things like the May half term, July, yep. August doing really well. Um, so it, it's, it's, there's just business coming always. Well, um, people know Virtuosa now. I mean, like, it's like coming home to go on her, but you've got a new know, ship coming, haven't you? She's such a love ship, Luz. It's, <laughs> we, were, we were so lucky. It was, if there was any good thing come out of the pandemic, it was Antonio in his craziness saying, let's have, the brand new ship in Southampton. Going around, yeah. You know, and we did think, oh my God, but then we have to fill this. And the Brits have just fallen in love with her. She's such a fabulous ship. And then when Antonio said, we're going to keep her for the winter, I'm thinking, oh my God, you know, God. I have to fill this. I have to fill <laughs> this. And it's one thing filling a ship in the summer. Yeah. Quite another doing it in the winter. Well, and then you've got your new ship, Eure Eurebia. Eurebia. Eurebia so, coming. Eurebia, so, which is our fifth Meravilia Plus ship, launches yeah. in June. And then we're going to have her in Southampton for the winter. Um, so brand new hardware for the winter. Um, we are having an amazing winter season this year. And it's kind of broken all expectations and records about how many Brits, Irish want to travel out of Southampton in the winter? We've, we've done a brilliant job at tweaking the onboard offering. And, you know, like late November, the ship was christmas -fied. We do winter parties. So that, that whole kind of thing that people, it's too cold to sail out of Southampton in the winter is clearly you're just blowing that out of the water. Yeah, because, I mean, that ship was built for cold weather cruising. Yeah. So you've it doesn't got matter what the weather is yeah. outside, Lucy. Yeah. And they were really smart because... What we did, we built these little winter Christmas markets around the pools with glue fine stands and uh, bratwurst oh, nice. stands. 
So, you know, you can't use the outdoor pool in the winter, but then you make something of it. And yeah. it's gone down a storm. And, you know, one of my team was on the New Year sailing and he just, he said it was absolutely incredible. Um, the atmosphere, the parties on board. So, yeah, I mean, Virtuosa, she's, she's an amazing ship. And I think we've got guests who've cruised her five, six, seven times already. Um, they love her. And with such a great range of, itineraries, um, canaries, we've got our new Iceland and Fjords itinerary next summer. There's always something for people to go back and try something new. So yeah, yeah. We love her. Great. We love okay. her. Okay. Just before we move on from price, because it's a bit controversial, but uh some of the clear conferences I was moderating, people were talking about how some of the prices did get a bit low, a bit of a race to the bottom. And uh that obviously doesn't help everybody in the long run because agents want to sell higher fares because they then make better commissions. So is there any danger of that? You're saying that there's incredible value out there at the minute, but there's so much hardware coming on. Are we going to see prices so low that it just makes it very difficult for agents to earn what they perhaps should be? Like the value is great. I I honestly don't think so. You know, I've already touched on it. I think anybody that sits and thinks, I'm going to wait to book until April or May, for a good deal, like they did last year, because, you know, yeah. last year was a very different year for us all. Q1, yeah. as we know, was a bit of a disaster because of Omicron, Omicron and the Ukraine war. So everybody had a late start and we were all looking to fill huge capacity very late. And I think Cruz had a very good year, but we were all selling a week, two weeks, three weeks out. And it was, and some of the prices were... Incredible. Very low. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, the customer absolutely won, uh, yeah. for sure. There were some amazing deals around. We are definitely in a transition period of moving back to something I see as more normal. Okay. We have exited December, going into 23, far better sold than we have been for three, four years. That only means one thing, that our capacity will be selling out far earlier. Yeah. And as yeah. capacity sells out, we will move prices up. And yeah, I'm sure any of my competitors will be in a very similar position. Um, and I think it's a fine balance between getting the volumes at the right price um, and then gradually, gradually tweaking up as that demand keeps coming in, um, you know, and people realising that they will need to pay more as the capacity shrinks. And we will not have a position like we had last year where there are thousands of cabins available late. Uh, okay, good to hear. Which will only yeah. mean that pricing will be higher. So again, to reiterate, anyone that is thinking of booking and agents, you know, really need to say to their customers, I know you may have paid X last year booking in June to travel on the 1st of July, but they aren't going to see that this year because okay. we are all far better sold already. And I'm sure, you know, I know where we are and I'm sure my competitors are. And it will be, I think it will be the year of transition to moving back to more normality. Um, and then, you know, as we as we exit this year, a bit touch wood, we have no issues, we have no problems. This is a very normal year. Then we will very much be back to normal. But, but I think the good news from all of it is more people are cruising. I think, yeah. you know, you know how long I've been in cruise loose. And I think it was always the holy grail trying to attract new to cruise. You know, then you're trying to get new to brand. And um, and I think COVID has really shattered those illusions of what cruise is. And you you know that you know the levels of new to cruise we were getting last year on, particularly Virtuosa, which was kind of upwards of 60%. Yeah. The majority of those customers have had an amazing time, now realise the value of cruise, are rebooking a cruise, they yeah. may have got a land-based holiday. And hopefully they're going and telling all their friends what a yeah. holiday and, cruise and, is. And it's not just new to cruise customers. You're, you're finding you're working with new to cruise agents, aren't you? Yeah, so, totally. age, I mean, just tell us a little bit about how the retail landscape has changed then in terms of where agents are, where the, where's the business coming from, what I mean, kind of people are you now talking to? Yeah, I mean, if I look at, you know, we, we break our, our business, you know, I have my national campaign to look after the cruise specialist. We've got the retail and home worker piece. Then you've got the tour ops. Everybody is doing well, Lucy. Um, I, I, you know, the cruise specialists are having a great time, but I will call out retail and home workers who are really having an amazing time. And 
it was always my prediction post pandemic that there would be a resurgence of the travel agent. I think the personal service, the ability to go in and see somebody, um, you know, because of some of the challenges through the pandemic, it, it, it's just reinforced the value of a high street travel agent or a home worker having a personal travel consultant, somebody that you know, somebody that you can speak to. And we are seeing retail within the large retailers, independents, home workers. It's absolutely booming. Um, hence, I need to put more staff on the road to manage and look after yeah. these people um, because there are more of them. You know, more and more home workers are out there. Um, you know, I've got Alicia, my head of retail, that now also looks after home working. And, you know, I think for every travel company, um, they all seem to be looking at home working now. The, the great thing about home workers is, you know, their guests generally spend more money. They book earlier. If we look at the, the, the booking patterns of them, yeah. they book very early. And they do spend more money. So, you know, it's an area of the business. I think, of course, everyone wants to develop and work with yeah. home workers and retailers as, as much as we possibly can. Yeah, absolutely. So with all this business, Steve, and you can't, almost can't service it, you have to get more people <laughs> in to do it. We'll service it, Liz. We'll service it. Yeah, you will, I know. But you've got an, a TV ad about to come out, which is only going to presumably drive more business into agents so tell us about I know, that i know so um we are commencing a huge new tv advertising campaign so we're going a little bit later and there's reasoning for that in that um it's a brand new positioning for our brand okay. um very exciting with a different lens on it um to maybe how cruise has been uh positioned um, out to the consumer before and um, the reasoning for that was we needed to capture a lot of footage from world europa which obviously only launched just recently so but you know what actually i think business is so good right now i think we launch on the 23rd of january with the the new campaign and it will be in press and video on demand and on tv um and you know i think that would be great to stimulate and keep the market going as we move into February and March, uh, but it's really exciting. And I think it will make people think of Cruise maybe a little bit differently than they have in the past. Oh, you're teasing us. No, I like to get, tease, we, you know that. I know, we need, we need to get a little preview that we can- Yeah, it's, it's great, we will, we, will get, we will get it over to you so you can so you can get it out to all your readers. But um, okay. it's, I know certainly it, it's been worked on for a long time and, you know, we obviously go through the process of putting it through various focus groups um, and what have you. It's been really well received and it's really made people think differently about cruising. And has it got a call to action to your trade partners? Yes, always, always. And um, it, I think it's, it's very current. Um, I can't say too much, but, you know, sustainability <laughs> uh, will be kind of, within there and yeah and yeah very important for everyone but core for you guys and uh of course your your beer is the first lng ship out of southampton for you guys as well yeah isn't, isn't i mean it? you know we are very proud of our um environmental credentials be it ocean key within the caribbean um you know we're already plug and power in southampton with virtuosa world europa was our first lng ship um, you know, we, we're really championing our sustainability credentials. Good you know, you. there's a way to go. And of course, you know, this doesn't happen overnight. And um, but it's something you have to be driving as an agenda because we when we test and we talk to focus groups, it is at the forefront of people's minds now, particularly the younger cruiser. Um, it's really important in their buying process. So yeah. We want to put that lens on it, and you know we are we're thinking really differently. And um, we went through the pandemic, and we stopped brochure production. Um, you know, be it itineraries were changing, we didn't have ship sailing, and we've made a conscious decision not to go back to paper copy brochure, which is which is unusual because most people most people stopped during the pandemic, but a lot of them have yeah you know brought brochures back out. But you, you know you're what? not doing that. It, no, we're not, and. It's a bold move, Lucy, but 
it hasn't affected sales. And I think you need to put your money where your mouth is. Um, and if you're serious about this, and this is a global initiative, you know, we operate in 80 plus markets globally. We produce millions of brochures. Yeah, that's um, a big cost. And, you know, it's, it's something that we just don't feel is a necessity. People have access to computers, to laptops, to phones. Yeah. And or no, they no can go into their travel from... agent and get the information from our website. We have downloadable digital brochures. And, and our agents cool with it. No backlash from them not no, having brochures. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, we're just working through some tech where, you know, at cruise shows, people will be able to go to our stand, scan a QR code and yeah. be able to pop up, get the digital brochure. So, you know, it, 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 the, the technology is fantastic out there now. And we just think, if we're really serious about this, then it would be very easy to jump back and put brochures back on shelves, particularly maybe pressure from competitors that have done it. But uh, we like to be bold and we like to be market leaders. And in a um, way, like you say, maybe without, if you don't have a brochure, it will force people to go and ask the travel agent for some more well, details. Absolutely. absolutely. That could be a good, could be a good thing. Yes. All right, Steve, Steve, I'm conscious of time, but because we haven't had you on here, for a while i just 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 if you can sum up how in your six years i know in the middle of that six years you had a pandemic to deal with but i mean how how much has the <coughs> as the company that you work for and the cruise industry changed since you've taken this this yeah, role oh my god that's a question is it? um well msc within the last six years oh my goodness it's i i, I to sum it up I don't recognise the company that I joined six years ago. Yeah, you're, not, um, you're not wearing so many jumpers, you know, thrown around no. your shoulders in a Mediterranean way. Steve, no, exactly, is very much your, exactly. Very because much I am now global. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's I, I, from stepping on board. Um, I don't recognise the business I work for. The the ships are just fabulous. The hardware, the crew, the delivery. It is so. Uh, UK centric. It's so right for British guests now. Um, you know the delivery, and you know I guess when I joined, we would have a ship, one of our really old, older, smaller ships, touch the UK maybe two, three times a year. I now have a ship in Southampton, fifty-two weeks of the year, and not just any ship, but kind of our flagships are here, yeah. sailing out of Southampton, and. That really was as a result of the pandemic. So, you know, whilst it was a terrible time, some some really good stuff came out of that for MSC. And, you know, you know, Lucy, we championed the restart of cruising, but both globally with Grandiosa in the Med, and we led the way. And in Southampton, we were yeah. the first cruise line to be bold and get out there and sail, you know, a couple of months, 10 weeks ahead of our competitors. I think that did wonders for MSC. And I believe it is our time. I think the brand has never been better placed to absolutely go to a level in the UK now. And I think the British and Irish guests love the product. I'm proud of my team. I've got a solid, mature sales team that are there to look after and service the trade partners out there. And I've had consistency. Um, and I think we've had consistency within MSC for six years. Yeah. Um, and that that's something that's changed because I think historically MSC didn't always have consistency here. So that level of consistency, the quality of the brand, I think cruising as a sector, um, the pandemic actually, whilst at the beginning we all thought, oh my goodness, what is this? Well, you know, we had to stop our operations globally, yeah. all cruise lines and we were all kind of scratching our heads. What does this mean for cruise? Is this putting us back 10 years? On the contrary, I think it's actually showcased how wonderful a cruise is, yeah. how safe, um, you know, the variety of holidays and options. We all have something wonderful to offer. And as we go through this financial um, woes within our country and, and kind of globally, it is perceived as a great value holiday. and. I think there's never been a better time to cruise and particularly cruise with MSC. 
I mean, you know, well, no, no better place to end it on, Steve. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, thank you for joining us and going through all thank that. Thank you it's for really having me, Rose. To, oh, it's great to hear such positivity. I hope it continues. Oh, wish you all the I, best. I, with I've all no your... doubt. I think this is going to be an amazing year for the travel sector. And Brilliant. It feels so good. And I will party and celebrate on Thursday. <laughs> we all will. All right. Well, see you there. Thank you so much. See you there, Wish you Liz. all the best. Thank you, Thanks Steve. Thanks a lot.